Welcome to another lecture on advanced audits. And um, thank you for joining. Um, I really, really appreciate your time. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, please subscribe. We post free lectures here that can certainly benefit you when it comes to studying for your professional exam. Um, you can just hit the subscribe button and also click the notification bell or the bell icon so that anytime I post a video, you'll be the very first person to get it. We also have social media handles. And so um, that's something you might want to check out on Facebook. You can find us, Pinnacle Professional College on Instagram as well, Pinnacle Professional College. Just follow us there, leave a comment. Um, leave a comment on our on our page and we'll definitely respond to you also on our videos as well on youtube if you have any questions you can just leave a comment and then we'll go ahead to help you out with it so today's objectives we'll be talking about practice management we're talking about quality control we're talking about professional appointments and any other issues in between now let's talk about practice management Let's talk about practice management. Um, the IFA code of ethics requires that members should perform their professional work with due skill and care. If you remember in our prior videos, we talked about the IESBES fundamental principles. And one of the fundamental principles was you know, due care and due skill and care and exhibiting a professional behavior and bringing a professional touch to your work. So you need to deliver your work with a proper degree of technical competence. You know, audit work can be performed by a large team of auditors who are referred to as the engagement team. Engagement team. The engagement team is simply a large team of auditors, a large team of auditors. Um, the members, of this team may have different levels of knowledge. So there are different levels of knowledge and experience in usually in the engagement team. In the engagement team, you have associates, you have senior associates, you have managers, you have senior managers, you have a partner. So there's a mix in terms of knowledge and experience on the engagement team. The engagement team is the team that basically performs the other work. To satisfy the professional requirements for due skill and care and technical competence, audit systems, audit firms, sorry, need to have a strong system of quality control. You cannot talk about um, <clears throat> due skill and care or a professionalism in delivering work without talking about quality control. So that's very, very key. Quality control is very, very key. Good quality, good procedures for quality control should reduce the risk. So it should reduce several risks for the audit firm. So when quality control measures are in place, it basically reduces the risk that audit firms are posed to. So there are several risks that are likely if there are no quality controls. Number one is that there's a risk that the audit firm issues an incorrect audit opinion an incorrect audit opinion, that's one. There's also a risk that the auditor will be sued for negligence if there are no qual quality controls, you know. So these are some of the risks that quality control measures mitigates. So good procedures for quality control should reduce the risk for the audit firm that it would issue an incorrect audit opinion an incorrect audit opinion and be sued for negligence. So if the audit firm is bent on maintaining and ensuring good quality control in the firm, you know, it's likely that they will not issue a wrong opinion or even be sued for negligence. The consequences of poor audit work and legal action by the clients could be any of the following. So in, if you don't put in place good quality control measures, um, these things could arise, these kind of costs could arise as a result of poor audit work. There could be legal damages, you could lose the clients, and more importantly, it affects the reputation of the audit firm. 
in terms of you know adverse publicity people begin to talk bad, bad about the audit firm and that's not what audit firm wants that's why they put in place quality control measures there could also be disciplinary proceedings by professional bodies like the icag now let's look at some risk areas a report produced by um, the international forum of independent audit regulators which is ifair in 2017 looked at findings from about 900 audits so 918 audits to be specific and they came up with certain risky areas areas that were identified as risky the first area that was identified as risky is accounting estimates you know there are times when you have to make estimates um, as part of your accounting procedures so accounting estimates are a risky area internal control testing testing internal controls are also risky because it has an impact on your substantive testing and even your financial statements as well audit sampling right if you don't get your samples correct it might not be representative of the population and it might not be sufficient enough to catch any errors group audits is also um, a risky area because of the complications and the complexities when it comes to group audits and revenue recognition when to recognize revenue and when not to recognize revenue at what point do you recognize revenue these are all conversations that um, have to be had and these are five key areas that were identified by looking at 918 audits performed by 120 audit firms these are the five top areas that were identified as very risky quality control procedures can be considered at two levels it can be considered as the audit firm as a whole and each individual audit engagement so you need to look at it from two levels in terms of the audit firm as a whole and each individual audit engagement very very important now let's look at quality control arrangements for individual engagements here we are looking at individual we talked about individual engagements and the firm as a whole we are here we are looking at individual engagement so isc which which is dealt with by isc 220 the objective of the auditor are set out in isc 20, 220 for an audit of financial statements is to implement quality control procedures at the engagement level to provide reasonable assurance that the audits you need to give reasonable assurance that the audits complies with the professional standards and any legal and regulatory obligations that's the first thing that the audit complies with professional standards and number two that the audit report is also appropriate so this is what isa 220 is capturing number one that the audit complies with professional standards and number two that the audit report is appropriate quality control arrangements for individual engagements which is isa 220 isa 220 again places the responsibility for key quality control matters on the engagement partner partner so when it comes to key issues relating to control matters or quality control matters sorry isa 220 places these key quality control matters on the engagement partner the engagement partner therefore has the responsibility for the overall quality of that particular audit and it is his responsibility or a responsibility to put procedures in place to ensure that you know standards are complied with the independence requirements are met take taking he must also ensure that he takes suitable action against any threats you know threats um, that might impact the audits you know remember we talked about threats and safeguards to threats so first off let, let me repeat that again you must ensure that ethical standards are complied with you must also ensure that independence requirements are met you must also ensure that 
um, he identifies the engagement partner must identify the circumstances and relationships that might give rise to any threats to independence. So threats is a key thing. The engagement partner has to also assess the impact of any breaches of the firm's independence policy. Are there any breaches anywhere? The engagement partner must take note of that. The engagement partner must also develop safeguards against any threats and must eliminate threats to independence. Very, very important. Very, very important. He must also ensure that the audit work is performed by competent people. We are talking about quality control issues here. So he must ensure that the audit work is performed by competent people. Competent people. Appropriate, he must also ensure that um, there's an appropriate monitoring systems that is being put in place. So there are several things that are within the remit or the authority of the engagement partner. We've talked about several of them. Um, it must ensure that ethical standards are complied with, that independence requirements are met, that you know, competent people are placed on the audits. You must identify any threats to independence and must eliminate threats if possible, you know, and build safeguards against any threats to independence. So these are several um, functions of the engagement partner when it comes to um, quality control. Let's look at quality control ar arrangements at the overall firm level. First, we did we, we talked about the engagement level. Now we are talking about the overall firm level, and that is dealt with by ISQC1. Quality control policies and procedures at the firm level are set out in ISQC1. Quality control for firms that perform audits and review of financial statements and other assurance and related service engagements. You know, so here you are looking at the audits, the overall firm as a whole. And it mirrors, you know, the objective of the auditor in ISA 220, but it's just that for this one, it's looking at the firm as a whole, the overall firm. The objective of the firm here is to establish and maintain a system of quality control to provide it with reasonable assurance that the firm, you know, the firm and its personnel comply with professional standards. So they must comply with professional standards and that reports issued by the firm are also appropriate. So similar logic, similar logic, right? Similar logic, very, very key. Similar logic, similar logic, very, very important. So that's something you should always, um, Uh, that's something you should. That's something you should take note of, and that's something you should um, keep in mind. That's something you should keep in mind. Okay, now let's move on to quality control arrangements at the overall firm level. Quality control engagements at the overall firm level. The quality control procedures. So this is a second part. The quality control procedures that are applied within an audit firm will reflect the nature and size of the audit practice. You know, So the nature and size of the audit practice will influence the quality control procedures that are put in place. However, personnel within the firm who are responsible for establishing and maintaining quality control procedures must have an understanding of ISQC1. You know, they must have an understanding and must put in place measures which address each these elements I'm coming to talk about, right? Number one, it's leadership responsibilities for quality. Leadership has a responsibility when it comes to quality control. You must understand ethical requirements, um, acceptance and continuance of engagement. We will talk about each of them. Um, quality control as it relates to human resources, as it relates to engagement performance, monitoring, as well as documentation. So let's look at these elements, right? 
and see how quality control plays a role. Now let's take number one, leadership responsibilities for quality. Leadership responsibilities for quality. So ISQC1 requires the firm to establish policies and procedures designed to promote an internal culture, you know? So what leadership must create is a culture that recognizes that quality is essential. That quality is essential. The ultimate responsibility for quality control policies and procedures should rest with the firm CEO or managing board of partners. You know, so when you hear leadership responsibilities for, um, for quality, leadership should create a culture that recognizes that quality is important. Quality is necessary, quality is relevant. Any person who has operational responsibility for quality control should have appropriate experience and ability and necessary authority. Very, very important. Now let's talk about um, ethical requirements. And the second thing, ISQC1 requires the firm to establish policies and procedures to provide it with reasonable assurance that the firm and its staff comply with relevant ethical requirements. Always remember that your audits must comply with ethical standards. And you should maintain independence. You should always maintain independence. The firm has a responsibility to communicate its independence requirements to staff. The staff have to know what exactly are the independence requirements so that they can comply with it. You know, and they must also identify and evaluate any circumstances that creates threats to independence and assess the impact of such threats. When you assess the impact of such threats, you must apply safeguards or withdraw from the engagement if appropriate. So that's it's when it comes to ethical requirements. Always remember that firms must comply with ethical standards. So what are some of the policies and procedures when it comes to ethical requirements? The staff have to notify the firm of circumstances and relationships that might create a threat to independence. So if there are any circumstances that have an impact on independence, um, the staff must talk about it. If there are, there's any issue of breaches of independence, the staff have to notify the firm. And the firm will communicate any of such breaches to the engagement partner and any other relevant staff so that they can have an idea of what is going on. Then the engagement partner will go ahead and take action or advise on what kind of action should be taken. Very, very important. Now let's move on to acceptance and continuance of engagement, which is another element, right? Which is another element when it comes to quality control at the overall firm level. ISQC1 requires the firm to establish policies and procedures to provide a reasonable assurance that the firm will only take on or continue work. So here we are trying to identify when the firm will accept or continue work. The firm will only take on work or continue work when they are competent to perform the engagement, when they have the capabilities, that is the resources to and perform the engagement. Also, when they can comply with the ethical requirements, they can take on work or accept an engagement. Another situation where they can accept or continue with an engagement is when they've looked at the integrity of the client and they feel like the client um, has integrity and therefore they can go ahead and work with the client. The policies and procedures should include requiring the firm to obtain sufficient information to make such decisions, you know, and also consider any potential conflicts of interest. So this is given as the circumstances under which an audit firm will accept or continue with an engagement. They must be competent, they must be, have the resources, they must comply with ethical requirements, and they must also check the integrity of the client. Now let's move on to human resources. ISQC1 requires the firm to ensure it has the 
human resources who have the competence and capabilities to perform the audit work. And that there's an engagement partner for each engagement team, you know. And so under human resources, there should be policies for recruiting, training and developing staff. You must train your staff so that they can be able to perform on the audit. You know, the firm's technical auditing procedure should be set out in a manual and reinforced by training. So you should always learn to train staff, develop staff. And you should also have a strategy around recruitment. What kind of people will you recruit into your firm to be able to help you with your audits? Now let's move on to engagement performance. Engagement performance. Policies and procedures are required to include those to promote consistent quality engagement performance. Consistent quality engagement performance. So you need to ensure that your engagement performance is up to standard, it's quality, you know, it's quality. And to ensure that, you know, there must be supervision and review that takes place you know, to ensure that work is properly reviewed and that it's up to the standard that we are looking for. Procedures in respect of completion of the final audit files on a timely basis and the confidentiality and safe custody of such documentation for an appropriate period. So as part of engagement performance, the final audit files must be completed in a timely manner you know, there's a time when we need um, the audit files. And so the audit files must be completed in a timely manner and must be kept in a safe custody. Now, let's talk about monitoring quality control procedures. Monitoring quality control procedures. The firm is required to establish a monitoring process, you know, that is designed to provide a reasonable assurance that the quality control system you've put in place is relevant and is operating effectively. The reason why we monitor quality control procedures is to ensure that actually our quality control procedures is working, is still operating effective, effectively. Yeah. So this process should include inspecting, inspecting at least one completed engagement for each engagement partner. So you take one engagement and you actually see if the quality control procedures are working. So what should the firm do? Number one, the firm should evaluate the effects of any deficiencies found to determine, found to be determined if they do indicate a failing in the firm's quality control system. So upon your inspection or upon your monitoring, you should evaluate any deficiencies in the quality control system. And you should communicate those deficiencies to relevant personnel. You should make them know so that it can be fixed. You know, so that's when you take, once you communicate it, appropriate remedial action can be taken. So some of the remedial actions include changes to the firm's quality control system, disciplinary action, um, you can also communicate to the training and professional development team so that they can include some of these things in their manual so that employees will not make those mistakes again. Now let's talk about documentation of quality control procedures. The following matters are required to be documented. Number one is the evidence of the operation of each element of the system of quality control. We need to document that each element of the system of quality control is operating, is actually working. And you need to also document any complaints made against the firm and how they were resolved. If there were any complaints and allegations made against the firm, we need to document that and also how we actually resolved them. Now, let's talk a little bit about quality control procedures, again, specific to individual engagements. 
The quality control procedures applied to the conduct of each individual engagement will be based around the effective management of the audit team working on that engagement. This will involve the assignment of engagement teams, the direction and supervision of staff, and the review of their work. So who do you assign to an engagement team, right? Do they have the skills? Do they have the knowledge to operate in that team? And how you supervise them in order to bring the best out in them so that they can you know, perform quality work, you know, as well as how reviewing their work as well. In terms of assign, assignment of engagement team, the engagement partner is responsible for ensuring that the engagement team has assigned people who are capable and competent to perform on the engagement. You know, so the engagement partner will look at things like the past experience or the prior practical experience of the engagement team members. So they'll look at, you know, the kind of audits or audit engagements that team members have been on in the past and whether they, there are similarities in the current audit engagements and therefore maybe they can recruit them to help with whatever audit engagement they are, they are looking at. So the prior practical experience of the engagement team members on engagements of a similar nature and complexity. Another factor that the engagement partner will also consider is the team members' knowledge and understanding of professional standards, legal and regulatory requirements. Very, very important. Now let's talk about the direction of audit staff. The direction of audit staff is the responsibility of the engagement partner. And what do we mean by direction and how is it even achieved? Direction is achieved by the following methods. The audit team members should be informed of the work they are expected to carry out and the objectives that the work is intended to achieve. So you are given the engagement direction. What kind of work are they supposed to, is the team supposed to achieve? You know, what are the objectives? What are we trying to execute? There should that we have to have a well-prepared audit work program, you know that serves as direction for the engagement team so that they know exactly what they are executing on. Also, the members of the audit team should understand their responsibilities, the nature of the business, you know, any risk related issues, you know, and any problems that may arise with the audits and how these problems will be dealt with. So, when we are talking about the direction of the audit staff, we are referring to, you know, giving, informing team members of what exactly they're expected to, pre to prepare or to carry out or to execute, you know, and the objectives that we are supposed to achieve. And usually do that this by through a well-prepared audit work program. Now let's talk about supervision of audit staff. Supervision should continue throughout the audit. Here you track the process, the progress of the audit, you address any issues that may arise and allow for consultation between team members because sometimes um, some staff do not have too much of experience. So you can consult, consult other team members who have a lot of experience. And one thing you should know about supervision is that it should continue throughout the audit, throughout the audit. So this is where we bring our lecture to an end. Kindly subscribe, share this video with your friends. Um, we post free ICA lectures here. And thank you for watching and have a good day.